Tanzania ni shimo simple. Tunakuja pamoja tuna discuss, tunafanya debate. Tunafanya taf, tuna tafiti pamoja na kubalishana mawazo. Kwamba ni namna gani ambao tunaweza tukatumia uwezo, ujuzi na nguvu tulionayo katika kukabiliana na changamoto ambayo inakabili jamii zetu. Tanzania, Tanzania. Nakupenda na kwa moyo wote. ndugu Joel na Nauka ni mwandishi lakini vile vile ni mkurugenzi na mwanzilishi wa taasisi moja inaitwa African Africa Success Academy sicho unachokijua sasa hivi kitakachokufanya wewe u survive kesho ukweli ni kwamba kile utakachokijua kesho ndicho kitakachokufanya uweze kuishi kesho Dalari anakuambia ili nikuonyeshe chumba nilipe 10000 ili nikakuonyeshe chumba. Anachokuuzia pale ni taarifa ana unique knowledge ambayo wewe hauna. Kwa maana yeye anajua chumba kilipo, wewe na degree yako haujui kilipo. Yeye ameishia darasa la saba, lakini ana unique information. Certificate qualifies you but it the skill that identifies you. Certificates tells us what you should expect from you but skill tells us who you are and what you can do Ndipo mmeza from 4 was the best student kitaifa Ndipo mmeza post graduate nilipata GPA ya 5 but when i sat down when i looked at my future at my destiny i realized there's something i'm missing and this is what i'm sharing to you today kwa sasa naomba nitumie fursa hii kumkaribisha kaka Joy na Nauka ajitambulishe vizuri sana lakini pia aweze kutupa mada. Asante sana. Kumpigie makofi nyingi nyingi tafadhali. Asante sana mbayani kwa utambulisho mzuri sana. Kwanza nimshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kutufanikisha kuwa hapa leo. Uh, mimi pamoja na kaka yetu Anton Lovanda tumetokea Dar es Salaam na jana tulikuja hapa na leo tutageuza na ukweli ni kwamba hatuna muda mrefu sana kuwa hapa pamoja nanyi kwa hiyo pia muda ambao tutaongea nafikiri tutajitahidi kuufupisha kwa sababu ya majukumu ambayo yanatukabili jioni ya leo Dar es Salaam kwa wote kwa pamoja nafikiri tutajaribu kuongea kwa kifupi lakini hiyo haimaanishi havitakuwa vitu vyenye nguvu vitakuwa vitu vyenye nguvu ambavyo vitaweza kukubadilisha pia kama nilivyotambulishwa jina langu naitwa Joel Arthur Nanauka ni mkurugenzi wa kampuni inaitwa Africa Success Academy ambayo tunashughulika na mambo ya mentoring na coaching tunashughulika na corporate training pamoja na business advisory services lakini pia ni mwandishi wa vitabu na kuna kitabu changu kinaitwa Timiza malengo yako ambacho nimezungumzia mbinu sitini ambazo watu maarufu wamekuwa kizitumia kufanikiwa katika taaluma mbalimbali e, ambazo ndifanya utafiti kwa muda wa miaka mitatu na wale utakaokihitaji nafikiri kitapatikana hapa baadaye sasa leo asubuhi kuna mambo ambayo nimejiandaa kuzungumza na vijana mlioko mahali hapa na kicho changu ambacho nimeita cha somo kinaitwa acquiring right mindset to help you achieve your goals in the modern times acquiring the right mindset to help you achieve your goals in the modern times. Ningependa kusema kwamba tunaishi katika ulimwengu ambao umebadilika sana. Ulimwengu tulionao sasa hivi sio ule ambao watu waliozoea kuishi. Mambo yamebadilika yanavyoendelea na future yetu baada ya leo 
ukweli ni kwamba itakuwa tofauti sana na tulivyo sasa hivi. Na ningependa nianze kwa kusema mfano mmoja wa mama mmoja ambaye baada ya kuwa ameolewa alikuwa kila wakati akikaanga samaki alikuwa anamkata samaki yule nusu na namkaanga. Sasa siku moja mume wake akaamua kumuuliza, "Kwa nini unamkata nusu? Kwa nini ni sile mzima?" Na tuna frying pan ambayo ni kubwa tu inatosha kumkaanga yule samaki. Yule mama akasema, "Ukweli ni kwamba hata mimi sijui sababu. Ila mama yangu alikuwa anafanya hivi tangu nikiwa mdogo." Kwa hiyo akamwambia, "Nenda kamuulize mama yako kwani alikuwa anafanya hivyo." Kwa akaenda kumfuata mama yake akamuuliza akasema mama hivi kwa nini tangu nikiwa mdogo ulikuwa unakata samaki nusu na umkange mzima mzima akasema ukweli ni kwamba nimekuwa nikifanya hivyo maisha yangu yote lakini sijui sababu ila bibi yako tangu mimi nikiwa mdogo amekuwa akifanya hivyo akasema sasa kwa nini tusiende tukamuulize bibi wakafuatana wote kwenda kumuuliza bibi akasema bibi mtuambie kwa nini wewe ulikuwa kila ukikanga samaki lazima unamkata nusu au mkange mzima mzima bibi yako akamwambia mnajua mwanangu na mjukuu wangu ni kwa sababu mimi wakati nakuwa na babu yenu chombo chetu cha kukangia samaki kilikuwa ni kidogo sana kwa kilikuwa kitoshi kumweka samaki mzima kwa ndio sababu kila wakati ilikuwa namkata yule samaki kwao akagundua kumbe practice ambayo amekuwa kifanya maisha yao yote ilikuwa ni irrelevant ila ni kwa sababu walikuwa wameona watu wengi wanafanya na wao pia wakakusudia kufanya hivyo. Sasa nitajitahidi kulingana na muda sitajua nitakava ngapi lakini nimeandaa vitu vinaitwa four insight to ensure your success. Mambo manne ambayo unatakiwa kuyajua ambayo yatakupa edge katika ulimwengu tunaoishi, yatakufanikisha beyond the average katika wakati tulio nao na yatakufanya wewe kuwa ni mtu wa tofauti sana katika dunia ya leo. Sasa insight number one. Insight number moja ni kwamba we are living in the world of knowledge and no longer the world of experience. Tunaishi katika dunia ambayo inathamini maarifa kuliko inavyothamini udhaifu wako. Kwa maneno mengine ni kwamba watu wenye right knowledge katika ulimwengu tulio nao ndio ambao wanapata platform kwenye dunia. Sasa hivi ulimwengu umeshift kutoka tunasema mechanical kuwa ni brain driven world kwamba ulimwengu unaendeshwa kwa taarifa tunaishi katika information age kwa mtu yote ambaye ana taarifa zaidi ya mwingine maana yake ana nafasi ya kutawala na kumiliki zaidi ya mtu mwingine yote yule kwa hiyo kwa maneno mengine ningependa nikukumbushe utafiti ambao umefanyika Marekani umeonyesha kwamba ufahamu na maarifa yoyote ambayo unayo yana half life ya miaka miwili na nusu mpaka miaka mitatu. Kwa maneno mengine chochote ambacho unakijua leo baada ya miaka miwili na nusu au miaka mitatu hakitakuwa na mantiki wala hakitakuwa na maana yoyote kwenye maisha yako. Hii maana yake ni nini? Ukitegemea degree yako uliyoipata au elimu yako uliyomaliza leo ikupe uweze kusurvive baada ya miaka miwili au mitatu utakuwa irrelevant katika marketplace. Na hiki ndicho kitu ambacho kinawapata watu wengi na vijana wengi sasa hivi. Kwa sababu wengi wanajivunia elimu walioipata, maarifa walioyapata miaka miwili au mitatu iliyopita. Lakini wasijojua ni kwamba kila baada ya miaka miwili na nusu au miaka mitatu, uvumbuzi wa maarifa unaotokea unatosha kukifanya kile unachokijua sasa hivi tunakita obsolete. Kinakuwa hakina maana. Na ukitaka kuamini ninachokisema, kumbuka simu ulizokuwa nayo uliyokuwa nayo au uliyokuwa unaijua miaka miwili na nusu au miaka mitatu iliyopita. Simu ambayo ilikuwa inathaminiwa sana miaka miwili na nusu iliyopita. Ye, yeah, ni simu hiyo leo ndio ile ambayo inathaminiwa mpaka leo. Utagundua simu ile haina maana tena. Haina nguvu tena. Kumbuka magari ambayo yalikuwa miaka miwili na nusu miaka mitatu yalikuwa tunayaappreciate. Utagundua kwamba sasa hivi kuna uvumbuzi mkubwa umefanyika wa magari mengine. Hata nguo, sasa hivi nguo ndani ya mwaka mmoja zinabadilika. Kwa hiyo maana yake taarifa zinabadilika kwa kasi sana kiasi kwamba wewe kama hautabadilika kwa kasi kupata zile taarifa hautakuwa na mantiki katika dunia ambayo tunaishi. Kwa hiyo maana ni kwamba sicho unachokijua sasa hivi kitakachokufanya wewe usurvive kesho. Ukweli ni kwamba kile utakachokijua kesho ndicho kitakachokufanya uweze kuishi kesho. Watu wengi wanasahau kwamba relevance yako, umuhimu wako kwenye maisha tulionayo ni kiwango cha ufahamu 
ambao unao sasa hivi watu wote wanaotawala dunia leo ni kwa sababu wamepata taarifa mapema kuliko wewe ambaye hujazipata kabla kwa hiyo kuna qualities nne za information au za knowledge ambazo ningependa uzifahamu ambazo zitakusaidia wewe kuweza kuwa kuwa mbele ya watu wengine katika ulimwengu tunaoishi ya kwanza tunasema lazima iwe accurate knowledge maarifa ambayo ni sahihi dunia leo inakuwa bombarded na information za kila aina kuna information zitakuwa kwenye facebook kuna taarifa zitakuwa kwenye whatsapp kuna taarifa zitakuwa kwenye magazeti kuna taarifa zitakuwa kwenye television kwa sababu unapopata taarifa ambazo sio sahihi ni one step away for you to get lost lazima upate accurate information na namna bora ya kupata accurate information number one, ni kusoma vitabu una uwezo wa kusoma vitabu una uwezo wa kukutofautisha maisha yako yote labda nikwambie napenda maneno ambayo Jim Rohn aliwahi kusema alisema formal education will give you a living but self development will make you a fortune ufahamu wa darasani unakusaidia wewe kuishi kupeleka mkono kinywani lakini ufahamu nje ya darasani ndio ambao unakufanya wewe kuwa mtu mkuu hapa duniani watu wote ambao unawafahamu wamefanikiwa ni matajiri leo wamefika mbali hawajafika pale kwa kutumia elimu yao ya darasani ni kwa sababu walitafuta kitu nje ya darasani kwa nini kwa sababu kanuni za maisha nje ya darasa ni tofauti na kanuni za maisha ndani ya darasa. Kwa lazima utafute accurate information. Tony Robbins ambaye ni mtu tajiri sana kule Marekani, yuko busy kiasi kwamba akitaka kufanya interview anafanya ndani ya ndege. CNN na BBC wanamtafuta ndani ya ndege akiwa anasafiri pengine kutoka Los Angeles kwenda New York kwa sababu hana muda. Lakini ninapozungumza leo hana degree ya darasani ila ndani ya miaka mitatu alisoma vitabu mia saba. na kwa kusoma vitabu mia saba, leo ana chuo kikuu mtu hajafanya degree lakini ana chuo kikuu kwa nini kwa sababu elimu nje ya darasa ina uwezo wa kukupa kile ambacho ndani ya darasa lako haiwezi kukupa kwa hiyo kwa maneno mengine lazima ustrive kupata accurate information kinachokutofautisha wewe uliokaa hapa na yule ambaye hajaja hapa kwa sababu anasema hana muda baada ya miaka mitatu tofauti yako na yeye itakuwa ni kubwa sana na hata jua imetokea wapi ila ni kwa sababu leo uko hapa unapata maarifa ambayo darasani uwezi kuyapata kwa lazima upate accurate information quality ya pili tunasema lazima upate complete knowledge complete knowledge maarifa lazima yao yamekamilika maarifa unayotafuta lazima yao na uwezo wa kukubalisha unaposoma kitabu kimoja kwa mfano, huwa nawaambia watu, kitabu changu mimi timiza malengo yako. Nimesoma zaidi ya watu mia tatu waliofanikiwa katika fani za biashara, katika fani za kilimo, wasanii, waimbaji, wacheza mziki, waimba mziki, wa maboxers na watu mbalimbali. Mbali. Na information hiyo nimeweka katika kitabu kimoja chenye kurasa nane. Nikisoma na research mbalimbali mbali za miaka mbalimbali. Maana yake nini? Unapokisoma taarifa ambazo mtu amezitumia kuzikusanya kwa miaka 30 wewe unazipata ndani ya mwezi mmoja maana yake ni kwamba umejisogeza hatua mbele miaka 30 kwa hiyo maana yake mimi nikisoma kitabu cha mtu alifanya research ya miaka 30 siwezi kufanana na wewe ambaye haujasoma kitabu kwa sababu maana yake ni kwamba nimeweza kukusanya taarifa za ndani ya miaka 30 ndani ya mwezi mmoja kwa ongea yangu ufahamu wangu na ufanisi wangu utalingana na maarifa nilionayo kwa lazima upate complete knowledge unapoamua kufanya kitu fulani kama wewe umeamua kuwa mfanyabiashara get a complete knowledge of business fahamu biashara inafanya kazi namna gani kama umeamua kuwa mkulima tafuta complete knowledge about agriculture chochote unachoamua kukifanya hakikisha unapata maarifa yanayojitosheleza katika kile ambacho umeamua kukifanya cha tatu tunasema quality ya tatu ni unique knowledge aina ya taarifa ulionayo ndio inajulisha thamani utakayokuwa nayo ukweli ni kwamba soko la biashara lolote linajengwa na taarifa ndio maana leo wewe na degree yako unapotafuta chumba pengine cha kupanga dalari anakuambia ili nikuonyeshe chumba nilipe 10000 ili nikakuonyeshe chumba anachokuuzia pale ni taarifa ana unique knowledge ambayo wewe hauna 
Kwa maana yeye anajua chumba kilipo, wewe na degree yako hujui kilipo. Yeye ameisha darasa la saba lakini ana unique information. Ukilipa miezi mbili anasema utanilipa mimi mwezi mmoja. Kwa nini? Mimi nilikuwa na taarifa ya kukupa chumba cha kupanga ambacho wewe hauna. Kinachomweka mjini nini? Taarifa. Unapokuwa na unique knowledge, unavuta value katika kile unachokifanya. Dunia haitafuti watu average. Dunia haitafuti watu wanaolingana. Dunia inatafuta kuwalipa watu ambao wako tofauti. Messi na Ronaldo wanacheza mpira na dakika tisini kama wachezaji wengine wote. Lakini wao wanalipwa pesa kubwa kuliko wengine kwa sababu wanafanya kitu cha tofauti, tofauti na wengine wote wanachofanya uwanjani. Na ndio maana watu mkimaliza degree hapa leo, mtakwenda kwa ajili wengine siku moja, mme, kwenye kampuni moja, mmesoma kozi moja, lakini mtalipwa mishahara tofauti kwa sababu ya ufahamu ambao kila mtu anao katika kile ambacho anakifanya. Quality ya nne tunaita timely knowledge. Unapopata maarifa lazima yawe kwa wakati. Leo kama ukipata maarifa ambayo yamepitwa na wakati, hayana faida. Ndio maana kwenye kila biashara Wafanyabiashara waliofanikiwa sana katika aina ya biashara wanayofanya ni wale watu ambao tunasema ni first entrant to the market. Watu ambao waliingia mwanzoni kwenye zile biashara. Kwa hiyo unapotafuta maarifa, tafuta maarifa ya wakati. Maarifa ambayo yatakufanya wewe uwe mbele kuliko watu wengine. Unapokuwa na maarifa ya wakati usika yanakupa nguvu ambayo watu wengine hawana. Kwa hiyo sio tu swala maarifa. Kwa mfano, wewe kwa hapa chuoni Watu wengi wanaanza kujifunza namna kutafuta kazi, kuandika CV, kufanya interview, kufanya connection na network ya kutafuta kazi baada ya kumaliza chuo. Tunasema hiyo ni wrong timing. Unatakiwa uanze ukiwa hapa. Ufahamu ukiwa hapa, upate skills zinazotakiwa ukiwa hapa. Ili unapomaliza, tayari umeshatengeneza base ambayo inatakiwa kule nje. Kwa lazima uwe na timely information timely knowledge katika kile ambacho unakitafuta. Kwa hiyo every day jitahidi kujua kitu kipya ambacho jana ulikuwa ukijui. Kwa sababu thamani yako ya leo inategemea unachokiongeza leo na sicho ambacho ulikuwa unakijua jana. Whatever you knew yesterday it is not important as what you are going to know today. Kwa sababu dunia inabadilika kwa kasi sana. Kwa cha kwanza point number one we are living in the world of knowledge and knowledge matters more than your experience point number 2 insight number 2 we are living in the world of skills and not the world of certificate tunaishi katika dunia ya maarifa na ustadi kuliko cheti chako leo tuna watu wangapi wanaomaliza degree unafikiri degree yako inaweza kukutofautisha nini na mtu mwingine Dunia tunaoishi leo nataka ukumbuke kitu kimoja kwamba certificate qualifies you but it is the skill that identifies you Cheti kinakutambulisha kwamba wewe una degree wewe una diploma wewe umefanya elimu fulani lakini ni ustadi wa kufanya jambo skill of doing something that gives you an edge to what you are doing. Leo kazini watu wameacha kuuliza habari ya vieti. Watu wanauliza what can you do? It's all about your skill. It's all about what can you perform. Sio tena kuhusiana na mimi nilimaliza chuo. Kila mtu amemaliza chuo. Na I want to tell you, mliona waliita interview uhamiaji watu wakajaa uwanja wa taifa. That is a small story. Five years to come from now. Five years to come from now. Utagundua kwamba degree yako haina nguvu tena ya kukufanya upate kazi yote hapa duniani. Kwa sababu everyone in every family there will be people with the degrees. Nini kitakotofautisha? Skill of doing something. Uwezo ustadi wa kufanya jambo fulani. Na kitu ambacho napenda kukusitiza Kosa ambalo watu wengi wanalifanya special graduates they move around with their certificates instead of moving around showing their skills watu wanabeba mabahasha na certificate zao the world is no longer interested in your certificate the world now is interested on your skill 
What can you do? Unamaliza chuo sawa. But what can you do? Don't tell me kwamba nimesoma na degree siyo ya kilimo, nimesoma siyo na degree siyo ya medicine, nimesoma na degree ya engineering. Yes, everyone else in town has the degree. What can you do which someone else cannot do? What skill do you have? What unique skill do you possess? Kama hauna special skill za kukufanya wewe utofautiane na mwingine, maana ni kwamba utakuwa stranded kwenye maisha ambayo unaishi. Sasa Certificates tells us what you should expect from you. But skill tells us who you are and what you can do. Na kwenye organization, kwenye taasisi yoyote, atukwajiri kwa sababu utuambia umesoma nini. Tunakwajiri kwa sababu tunataka tuone unaweza kufanya nini. Ndiyo mana tuna job description. Kwamba we expect you to do one, two, three, four, five. Sasa, this is unfortunate news for you. Education system yetu haitufundish acquisition of skill. Inatufundisha just general knowledge. Na kwa sababu hiyo tunakuwa na general graduates with no skills. You might not like this, but this is the truth. Report ya LO ya Tanzania imethibitisha one of the cause of unemployability kwa Tanzania ni kwa sababu hawana required skills in the job market. Kwa hiyo watu wengi wana vieti lakini hawana skills. Na kwa sababu hiyo watu wengi wamemaliza vyuo, wamemaliza shule lakini hawana necessary skills ambazo zinahitajika wao waweze kufanya vizuri katika soko la ajira. Kwa hiyo ukitegemea certificate itakupa kitu tunaitwa tunaita temporary relevance ambayo haitadumu itakuwa tu nile unajisifia kwamba mimi na degree bana mimi na degree lakini you can do nothing and if you can do nothing nobody will be will pay attention for you kwa nini kwa sababu the world right now is looking for skills kwa swali la msingi la kujiuliza what skill do you have we are going to sell our skills there kule nje atuuzi vieti tunauza skill sasa hivi dunia inakuwa run na kitu naitwa competence based framework of work. Tunaangalia capability ulionayo. Tunaangalia uwezo ulionayo. Kwa usikae katika chuo au kakati hapa duniani unasema mimi nimesoma. No. What special thing can you do and you can show to us? Sasa Kuna four important skills quickly ambazo nataka nisemee hapa. Kwenye point ya pili. Number one is communication skill. Communication skill ni your ability to express your ideas. Una jambo unataka kusema, watu wengi ukiwa kwenye interview nimekaa kwenye interview panel. Mtu, mtu, watu wengi ukimwangalia anavyozungumza unagundua huyu ana kitu fulani anataka kusema. Lakini hawezi kujiexpress. Hawezi kujieleza. Unahitaji communication skill. Communication skill maana yake ni ability to negotiate ability to influence that is a communication skill leo unahitaji kuwa na high communication skill kuliko wakati mwingine wote kwa sababu the world is too connected connected through social media connected everywhere Co communication skill is one of the important skill you need to have if you really want to make it kwa sio swali la kujua jambo ila uwezo wako wa kuwa na mawasiliano uwezo wako wa kuwa na skill ya negotiate skill ya kuji express kile unachotaka skill ya ku influence kile ambacho unakitaka number 2 skill that we need tunaita decision making skill one thing you need to know ni kwamba decision yako ndio na determine direction yako na direction yako ndio na determine destination yako kwa lazima uwe na uwezo wa kufanya decision effectively and timely decision kuhusiana na kazi unayotaka decision kuhusiana na future unayotaka decision kuhusiana na watu wa kuambatana nao decision kuhusiana na biashara unayotaka kuifanya kuna watu wengi wamekuwa stranded kwa sababu of failure to do decision dunia inavyobadilika watu ambao wanafaidika ni wale ambao watu they can see far ahead and make their decision before the times change 
kabla dunia haijabadilika kabla mambo hayajabadilika watu wanaona mbali na kufanya maamuzi yanayoendana ili waendane na mabadiliko ndio ambao wanafika mbali sana kwa you need decision making skill number three tunaita brand development skill brand development skill one of the skill ambayo utahitaji pia ni namna ya wewe kuji brand kwa special kwa unique we want to hear tunapozungumza jina lako tunaposema wewe unaitwa Daniel wewe unaitwa Moses wewe unaitwa James wewe unaitwa Ismail watu wakitaja jina lako what does it represent that's the branding lazima uweze kuwakilisha jambo kwa lazima uwe na uwezo wa kujibrand unapoenda kazini wanapokuuliza tuna wanafunzi wenzako wasua memali, wamemaliza chuo na wewe wamesoma course moja now we have only one post only one vacancy why should we employ you and not your colleagues brand will differentiate you utaweza kujua kitu cha kuzungumza kwa sababu umeweza kujitofautisha na the last skill that you need tunaita ni habit development skill habit development skill unachotakiwa kujua maisha yako ni mjumuiko wa tabia zako za kila siku your life is the sum total of your daily habits wewe ulivyo leo ni matokeo ya tabia zako za kila siku na mtafiti mmoja anaitwa Tim Cole wa Marekani alifanya utafiti alichukua matajiri 233 na maskini 128 akawafanyia utafiti tangu wanapoamka mpaka wanapokwenda kulala akagundua wanatofautiana mambo mia tatu jinsi wanavyofanya tangu wanapoamka mpaka wanapokwenda kulala na kadiri unavyokosa mambo hayo ndivyo ambavyo na wewe utashindwa kufika kule ambako unataka kwenda kwa kwenye tabia lazima ujijengee tabia ambazo zinajenga ile, ile hatima ambayo unaitafuta au ile future ambayo unaitaka kwa katika tabia kuna mambo manne unatakiwa kuyafanya cha kwanza kuna tabia lazima uziache kama unataka kwenda sehemu mbali tunaita you have to abandon some of these habits hii kanuni inaitwa a a e r lazima tabia fulani uziache ni kama leo kimfuata muona masumbi kimfuata Anton Joshua eh yeah, ukimfuata eh Meweza Mesha staff tafuta wengine ambao na wakina Tyson Fury ukiwatafuta leo atakwambia ili wawe mabondia wazuri kuna vyakula watakiwa kula kuna vitu watakiwa kuvifanya ambavyo mwingine akivifanya havina tatizo ila wewe ukivifanya vina tatizo kwa sababu vinakwenda against your destiny vinakwenda against na mambo ambayo unataka kuyafanya kwa hiyo inawezekana kila mtu yule jambo analifanya lakini for you you shouldn't do it kwa sababu sio kitu ambacho kinakupeleka kule ambako unataka kwenda cha pili kuna tabia ambazo tunasema lazima uzi adapt lazima uwe nazo inawezekana sasa hivi hauna kuna wengine ninavyozungumza hapa tabia hamna tabia za kusoma vitabu na wanasema mimi nataka kuwa mtu mkubwa nataka kufika mbali nataka kuwa maarifa lakini hausomi vitabu kama sio msomaji vitabu maana yake hautafika mbali kwa ni tabia ambayo lazima ujilazimishie wengi mnamfahamu Ben Carson Ben Carson na kaka yake walipokuwa nasoma mama yao hakuwa anajua kusoma wala kuandika na Ben Carson alikuwa ni mtu wa mwisho darasani walikuwa anamuita the dumbest kid ukisoma kitabu chake the think big na mama yake Sonya akasema alipomwangalia Ben Carson akasema ni kweli leo anamuita the dumbest kid lakini nikimwangalia mtoto wangu naona ndani yake kuna kitu cha tofauti ambacho anacho so akaanza kumjengea tabia kuna tabia akamwambia as a abandon na kuna tabia akamwambia as a doubt moja ya tabia alimwambia abandon ni kuangalia television kwa muda mrefu akamwambia ndani ya wiki utakuwa unaangalia television mara mbili tu vipindi viwili na tabia unayotakiwa kuiadapt kila wiki utakwenda library utasoma vitabu viwili na utaniandikia summary utaniletea Ben Carson akakasirika kwa sababu hakuwa na muda wa kucheza na wenzake hakuwa na muda kuangalia katuni hakuwa na muda kuangalia movie lakini hakujua kwamba tabia zina uwezo wa kumbadilisha mtu na akaanza kuandika anamletea mama yake mama yake ajui kusoma wala kuandika ana rate tu leo umepata 80 yeye alikuwa ajui kama mama yake ajui kusoma leo umepata 70 jitahidi jitahidi leo umepata 90 lakini within one year Ben Carson akatoka kuwa the dumbest kid in the class to become the smartest kid in the class ndani ya kila mmoja wetu kuna genius ndani ya kila mmoja wetu kuna mtu mkuu amejificha ndani yako ambaye leo Ben Carson 
asinge adapt that habit pengine leo asinge dare kugombea urais wa Marekani kupitia chama cha Republican pengine leo tusinge kuwa na the first neurosurgeon in the world ambaye alitenganisha watoto waliongana vichwa pengine leo Ben Carson angekuwa kwenye mitaa ya New York akiwa omba omba watu wengi wanadhania wao wameumbwa kwa wa kawaida wameumbwa kwa watu wa chini kwa sababu hawako tayari kwa dap tabia ambazo zinaweza zikawabadilisha pengine leo navyoongea naongea na Ben Carson wa Tanzania umekaa kwenye hicho kiti na kesho yako inakusubiri ili uwe mtu mkuu lakini ili ufike hapo lazima uadapt new habits lazima uabandon some of those habits ambazo zimekuchukulia muda wako ambazo zimekupotezea na zimekufanya kupotezea mwelekeo jambo la tatu kwenye habits kuna habits ambazo lazima uexpand kuna habits ambazo unaziishi lakini hauzishi kwa muda mrefu hauzishi inavyotakiwa kwa lazima uziongezee muda wa kuzishi na mwisho kuna habits ambazo tunasema unazirijuice zinazikana zisiwe na madhara sana lakini ukiendelea kuzifanya kwa muda mrefu zitakuja kuwa na madhara makubwa baadaye kwa hiyo tusemi uziache lakini tunasema punguza namna ambavyo unazitumia inawezekana wewe unapenda kuangalia sana television sio kitu kibaya kuangalia television sio kitu kibaya kuangalia movie lakini unapoangalia kwa muda mrefu at the expense of your personal development maana yake tunasema e habit unataka unatakiwa uipunguze ili ufike kule unakotaka na mimi ninazungumza na mtu hapa tatu ya kwanza tumesema we are living in the world of knowledge and not world of experience ya pili world of skills and not world of certificate na nikaeleza hapo ya tatu The world right now is looking for your potential is not looking for your academic excellence. This is hard but it's truth. The world right now is looking for people with the potential not for the people with high academic excellence. Hivi karibuni nilisoma kitabu kinaitwa Why A students work for C students and B students are working for the government. I was interested. I'm not undermining your performance in class. Sisemi kwamba kufaulu darasani sio kitu kizuri. I'm one of the people ambaye na value sana watu kufaulu darasani. Na nili struggle sana kufaulu darasani. Lakini at the end I realized it's not enough to make me who I want to become. Ndivyo mmeza form 4 I was the best student kitaifa. Ndivyo mmeza post graduate nilipata GPA ya tano. But when I sat down When I looked at my future and my destiny I realized there's something I'm missing and this is what I'm sharing to you today. So unaweza kuwa na GPA ya 5, unaweza kuwa the best student, but how many best students are out there in the world are suffering today? Wangapi leo hawana kazi na GPA zao za 4.8 4.9? Wangapi there are no bodies in this country because there's something more than your academic achievement. The world right now is looking for your potential is looking for something that no one has except you. Nilipokuwa nasoma kitabu I was so much surprised. Akaandika list ya watu 50 ambao wamebadilisha dunia. Wakiwa marais, ma scientists na watu mbalimbali. First surprise they got. Five presidents of America have never been to university. Five of them. And my question was how comes? Inawezekanaje ukawa na marais ambaye hajafika university? Before I realized All the great invention you know in the world are from dropouts. Talk of Bill Gates, he dropped from Harvard. Talk of Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, he dropped from Harvard. Talk of Thomas Edison, he never finished college, but today he has a company still lives even to now. Talk of Steve Jobs, he never finished college. What's the problem with college? One day nilikuwa namsikiza Steve Jobs akasema I thank God because I was not disadvantaged to go to finish my degree. Kwa maneno mengine something goes wrong when people get into the school system. Something is dying. Na leo nataka nikwambie kuna vifo vya aina tatu duniani. First death tunaita spiritual death. Spiritual death is one man has been separated from God. Hana relationship na Mungu katika dini yake wala uhusiano na Mungu. We call the spiritual death. Watu wengi wana spiritual death. Number two, tunaita physical death. Physical death is when your spirit separates from your body. Kila mmoja wetu atapata physical death. Lakini one of the dangerous death ambayo nataka uiogope kwenye maisha yako tunaita potential death. 
Somebody said, many people die at the age of 21 and they are buried at the age of 65. Watu wengi wamekufa wakiwa na miaka 21 na wanaziko wakiwa na miaka 61 kwa sababu wanaishi katika ndoto ambazo wazitaki wanafanya mambo ambayo hayapendi na wanakuwa mpaka watu wazima na wazee wakifanya mambo ambayo hayako katika mioyo yao. Taasisi ya moyo ya Marekani, American Heart Institute walifanya utafiti wakagundua watu wengi sana Marekani wanakufa siku ya Jumatatu kati ya saa 12 asubuhi mpaka saa 3 asubuhi. Walipofanya utafiti zaidi wakagundua ni kwa sababu baada ya kuinjoa weekend kula bata weekend Jumatatu wanagundua wanatakiwa kwenda kwenye ofisi ambazo hawataki kwenda wanatakiwa kufanya kazi ambazo sio ndoto zao wako tena watu ambao hawapendi walikuwa wanataka wafanye biashara lakini wamelazimika kwenda kufanya kazi ambao wapendi na watu wengi wanakufa never be one of them who will die before your time because you don't realize your potential kama unataka kuenjoy life live your potential Kwenye potensho yako, ndiko kuna uniqueness yako. Ndiko kuna upeke wako. Na katika upeke wako, ndiko ambako kuna value yako. The world is looking for potential. Ndumana leo kiangalia watu walio fanikiwa. Sio watu ambao wamefanya vitu kwa sababu ya shule zao. Ni watu ambao wamefanya vitu kwa sababu ya potensho zao. Talk of musician, you know. Zungumza wanamziki matajiri wakubwa unawafahamu. Zungumza wafanya biashara wakubwa unawafahamu. Zungumza wakulima wakubwa unawa farm. They lived up to their potential. Therefore, you have to find yourself. The first and most important question ya kujuliza, who am I? What did I come to do in this world? And where am I going after here? If you don't know who you are, nobody will know who you are. Don't expect people wakwane wane special if you have not discovered something special of doing in this world. So the world is looking now for potential people. People who can do great things. Because success out of school is governed by laws that no school curriculum teaches. I'll give you a simple example. How many professors of entrepreneurship do you know? And tell me, how best entrepreneurs are they? How many doctors and professors of business do you know in schools? And tell me, what one large company do they own? Not in this country, in the region. Nenda Forbes list of big people in the world. Don't take 100, don't take 50. Take 500 people in the world. Influential, richest people in the world. And show me one professor. I'll give you my iPad right now. What's wrong with school? What's wrong? It's because we think we are too much better. We know everything. Let me tell you. Just like you need a law of gravitation to fly a flight. But you need a law of flotation. Archimedes principle. To make a ship. So the principles you need for your academic achievement. They are quite different from the principles you need for your success out there in the world. If you're not careful, you might end up being frustrated. But you're here today, you'll never be frustrated because you're getting the right steps. So, where's you to me a law of flotation? Kurusha ndege. No. You okay to me barin. So, you can't get out of university. Na expectation zako. Mimi ndo nilikuwa kipanga. Mimi ndo nilikuwa najua. Unajua mimi siku za kwanza utakuona vaa vizuri. To realize after two months. Viatu vimenda upande moja tiari. Na bashe mesha chanika. You are no longer relevant. Seek to explore your potential. Seek to live your potential. That's where your greatness is. That's where your future is hidden. So. Winding up this point. The word pays more to those who display their potential above those who depends on their academic excellence. Dunia leo inawalipa zaidi wale wano explore potentials hao kuliko wale ambao wanategemea vieti vyao. Not very long from now nilikuwa niko employed. Nilikuwa nafanya kazi UN. 
shirika la UNESCO and they were paying me good nilipokuwa nataka kutoka nikawa na mimi napata changamoto ananiambia no sasa usitoke tutakuongezea mshahara tutakupa na chio a lot of i mean wanakupa bait nyingi sana but later on i said no i want to live my dream i want to explore my potential because i know the world pays much more for living my potential than for having my certificate i went out with a challenge challenge kanzisha kampuni nikafanya mambo there's a day i got a training doing it for six hours they paid me two third of what i was working for one month did you hear what i say i could make in two weeks what i used to make in one month that is the meaning like in why many people are bound wako pale wanakaa nasema mimi na degree yangu mimi nimekusoma kitu fulani lazima niwe mtu fulani no the world right now is looking for people who are doing things differently they are looking at you and they are saying okay you have a degree like brother so you have a degree like sister so what else can you do you said there's something special i can do for you and when you start doing it they said yes we are looking for you are you not surprised kwamba consultant wanalipo pesa nyingi kuliko employees umesha kujiuliza hilo swali why anakuja tu anafanya pale kidogo lakini alipo pesa nyingi kuliko mtu ambaye anatakiwa report saa mbili atoke saa kumi na moja. why doing things different consultant is living in his potential and you are living under the rules and laws of employment now i want to challenge you today look for your potential live your potential explore your potential you will never regret in your life finally number 4 nilisema kuna insight nne insight ya ya nne ya mwisho success in the world now depends on your ability to discover your purpose set goals and pursue your dream discover your purpose set goals and pursue your dream let me tell you uwezi kuwa na mafanikio zaidi ya ufahamu wako wa kusudi lilokuleta duniani the reason of you coming to the world is the first knowledge you need to have in your life kama hujui kitu chochote kile duniani yani you are ignorant of everything never be ignorant of your purpose never be ignorant of why you came to this world and i want to tell you hakuna mtu amezaliwa kwa bahati mbaya kila mtu aliyezaliwa alikuwa calculated na Mungu hata kama wazazi walikuwa sema hatukukutarajia god expected you kwa sababu alikuwa na uwezo wa kukuzuia so no one came to this world by accident kabla hujazaliwa kulikuwa kuna plan kwamba one day namtaka huyu jamaa siku moja awe kuwa mfanyabiashara mkubwa katika taifa la Tanzania na ili awe mfanyabiashara mkubwa mwaka 2035 basi itabidi azaliwe mwaka 1982 na kabla ili azaliwe azaliwe na apate experience inayotaka itabidi azaliwe kwenye familia ya mzee fulani na mama fulani ili akasome shule fulani akutane na mtu fulani ambaye atampa connection fulani ili baada ya miaka michache awe na skills zinazohitajika na awe mahali sahi ili nitakapotengeneza opportunity ya investment itakayompa billion awe tayari yuko kwenye right position no one is in this world by accident everyone is here by purpose discover your purpose set goals for your purpose and live your dream now remember your purpose is what makes you different now there are five things i want to say under this heading of purpose set goals and pursue your dream number one, work hard to discover your purpose the first chapter ya kitabu changu nimeuliza swali umekuja duniani kufanya nini kati ya vitu ambavyo nimejifunza kwa watu wote maarufu ambao niliwasoma the first thing waliweza kusema wao wako duniani kufanya nini siku moja Tiger Woods alikuwa anamhoji kwenye television anamwambia Tiger Woods it looks like you like golf so much akasema no not that i like golf i am golf sio tu napenda golf mimi mwenyewe ni golf ndio maana leo tukisema golf the first name comes to your mind Tiger Woods So discover your purpose 
na watu wengi hawapei attention kwenye discover purpose yao kwa sababu they don't know how important it is unajua ukiishi nje ya kusudi lako uhitaji mtu yote akufelishe yani wewe utafeli automatic leo ukimchukua samaki ambaye purpose yake ni kuishi kwenye maji ukamweka nje ya maji uhitaji kumpiga ukimchomoa tu ukamweka anakufa mwenyewe sasa na wewe ni vile hivyo can you imagine leo Messi angekuwa amengangania kwa mchezaji basket nani angemjua strength yake iko miguuni kimo chake kigemwangusha kwani kwa sababu you are designed for your purpose ukijiangalia ukijiona ulivyo ni kwamba umekuwa designed for a certain purpose go discover that purpose Yulize umekuja kufanya nini duniani? What is one thing ambacho utakuwa tayari kukifanya maisha yako yote bila kuchoka? Tukikwambia leo we are able to give you all the amount of money you want. Kwa sababu let me highlight this. There's nothing foolish you can do in the world like working for salary or working to get money. You will never be satisfied. Ndio maana leo kuna matajiri Mesha kusikia kuna tajiri mmoja alienda Nairobi akajiangusha kutoka Gorofane mtanzania Tajiri. Kuna matajiri wanajinyonga. I read that story one day ya jamaa mmoja alikuwa anaitwa Manchester. Kule Marekani. Siku moja akajitupa kwenye mto, akataka kujua. Kijana mmoja alikuwa pembeni pana jua kuogelea alikuwa anaitwa Winston. Akaogelea akaenda kumfuata, akamuokoa. Alipomuokoa yule mzee alikuwa na miaka over 60 na alikuwa ndo the richest man in that town akaona yule kijana muuliza yule mzee kwa nini unataka kujua akasema because the life has got no value kila mtu ananiona nimefanikiwa kila mtu ananisifia kila mtu ananiona wa maana lakini there is no satisfaction in my heart i'm not doing what i was born to do there are many people in the world today you look at them ukiwaangalia wanasema yule ni tajiri yule amefanikiwa but i want to tell you my friend there are many people who are crying inside their heart because they they're saying i wish i could live my purpose Few months ago nilikutana na mzee mmoja ni daktar ambaye alishao kufundisha chuo kikuu cha Dar es Salaam. Akasoma kitabu changu wa Kanita. He's about 65 I think years of age. Akanita kanambia I want to talk to you. Nikafika kwenye mgawa nikaongea naye akanambia I just have one thing to advise you. Nikamwambia what? Akasema make sure you live your purpose. Nikasema why are you telling me that? Akasema when you look at me nimeinvest kwenye real estate. Ukiniangalia nina PhD. Ukiniangalia na familia na kila kitu watoto wangu wanasoma nje nje and you think I'm successful but Joel I want to tell you I'm regretting living my life if I've been told to live my life once again I will never live the way I lived I wish I could respond to my purpose How many people are dying in this world because they are not living to their purpose Dr. Miles Muru akasema same tajiri duniani sio kwenye migodi ya South Africa sio kwenye mafuta Saudi Arabia same tajiri zaidi duniani ni kwenye makaburi kwa sababu ukienda kwenye makaburi kuna watu walikuwa wanatakiwa wao na mziki wakubwa duniani lakini wamekufa hawajaandika nyimbo zao kuna watu walikuwa wanatakiwa wafanye biashara wakubwa lakini kwa sababu ya uoga wa maisha wakakubali kuendelea kuajiriwa mpaka kuzeka na wameshindwa kuchukua hatua kuanza kuziishi biashara zao kuna watu walikuwa wanatakiwa andike vitabu lakini kwa sababu ya historia yao wakajidharau na wajafanya kile ambacho walikuwa wanatakiwa kufanya live your purpose tell your neighbor live your purpose number two, set your goals set goals your ability my book is all about goals my book is all about goals one of the most important skill that you need in your life is your ability to set goals scientifically it has been proven hawezi kufanikiwa bila kuwa na malengo wale watu wanaosema mimi tu nitamaliza itategemea opportunity itakayopata itategemea si uchumi utakuwaje you will never go anywhere mwaka 1953 choke kucha yale marekani walifanya utafiti wa vijana mia moja ambao utafitiwa pia ulirudiwa na chuo cha Harvard University Business School mwaka 1979 wakachukua vijana mia moja walikuwa wanamaliza graduates wakauliza kila mmoja unataka kufanya nini unataka kwenda wapi baada ya miaka kumi utakuwa nani baada ya miaka ishirini utakuwa nani Hundi kitu chogundua katika walio wauliza watu 84 walikuwa hawana plan hawana goal kuhusiana na maisha yao kwa sababu mimi nikimaliza itategemea kitakachotokea watu 13 walikuwa wana goal lakini hawana plan wako wanasema mimi nitakuwa mfanye biashara mkubwa nitafanya kazi kwenye kampuni kubwa lakini ukaweza how they don't have plan na watu watatu walikuwa wamebakia they had plans and they had goal for their future Utafiti huu waliwafuatilia kwa miaka ishirini baada ya kuwa wamemaliza chuo. Baada ya miaka ishirini 
Harvard Business School wakachapisha research ya matokeo yao. Na hiki ndicho walichogundua. Walipoangalia watu 13 wale ambao walikuwa wana goals lakini hawana plan waka compare na watu 84 ambao walikuwa wana goals hawana goals na pia hawana plan walipojumlisha mafanikio yao ya kifedha na kila kitu wakagundua wale watu 13 utajiri wao na mafanikio yao ni mara mbili ya wale watu 84 baada ya miaka 20 waka watafuta wale watu watatu ambao walikuwa wana goals very specific na wana plans walipowahoji walipotafuta utajiri wao wakajumlisha pesa zao na mali zao wakagundua wakiwachukua wale watatu wakachukua wale 84 na 13 wakajumlisha manake 97 ukakompea nao watatu hao watatu walikuwa wametajirika wame na kufanikiwa mara kumi zaidi ya wale 97 and the conclusion is if you don't have goals for your life you are going nowhere because success is not by accident success is planned so if you don't have goals sit down and set your goals number C pay the price lipa gharama lipa gharama ya muda lipa gharama ya fedha kama uko hapa leo unalipa gharama avoid immediate gratification kuna utafiti mwingine ulifanya unaitwa marshmallow principle maarufu sana professor mmoja anaitwa sherry wa stanford university alichukua watoto wadogo chini ya miaka mitano akaweka kwenye chumba akaokea na kamera akawaokea pipi akawaambia ukila pipi sasa hivi ndani ya dakika 15 baada ya mimi kuondoka sitakupa chochote lakini usipokula nikirudi nikakuta ujala nitakupa pipi nyingine alipondoka alipofunga kamera baada ya dakika chache tu kuna vitoto havikuvumilia ghafla tu pap vikabeba pipi vikaanza kula vingine vikao vinachukua pipi vinalingishia lingishia vinavumilia vinarudisha baada muda vikashindwa dakika 13 dakika 12 vikala vichache sana vitoto viliweza kuvumilia mpaka dakika 15 waliporudi waka wakapewa pipi ya pili Professor Sherry alifuatilia maisha ya watoto kwa miaka 30 katika maisha yao. Baada ya miaka 30 akagundua watoto wote ambao waliweza kuvumilia kutokula ile pipi walikuwa wamefanikiwa sana kuliko wale wengine. Wale wengine wengi walikuwa kwenye drug addiction, wengi walikuwa hawajafanikiwa kwenye kazi zao. What does it tell you? Your ability to delay the immediate gratification for the better future is what you need for you to become successful. Uko hapa kwa sababu ungeweza kuwa umelala unalipa gharama uko hapo ungeweza kuona piga story kama wengine you are paying the price hautaona tofauti yake leo wala hautaona tofauti yake kesho ni kama vile we unajenga gorofa mwenzako anajenga nyumba ya kawaida wewe ukiwa unajenga gorofa wakati unaendelea kuchimba msingi hujamaliza msingi mwenzako anapaua lakini utakapoanza kuchomoka chini ukaanza kupanda juu mwisho wa siku unaanza kumchungulia hivi that's how life is kwa hiyo wanaojenga nyumba za chini usio na wasiwasi nao you are building a long high building pay the price now Number four, focus. Focus simply means follow one cause until successful. Na hapa nitatumia simple example sitaongea sana hapa. Ni hivi. Mnaifahamu convergent lens. Lens nafikiri ni lens mbonyeo ile inaitwa. Ukiweka jiwani pale, ukaweka karatasi na lens. Baada ya muda karatasi itashika moto. Swali langu kwako. Kwa nini wewe ukikaa pale na shati lako huwa alishiki moto? au kwa nini usichukue ile karatasi ukaiweka pale ikashika moto yenyewe what the difference the difference is focus lens imekusanya nguvu zote za jua imeziweka in one place kwa matokeo yake yanakuwa makubwa likewise once you discover your purpose once you know your goals whatever thing you do you have to align it to fulfill your purpose hapo ndipo utakapoona matokeo makubwa na sio kujitapanya kila mahali waingereza wanasema the jack of all trade is the master of none be in one area and do it very well that people will identify you and finally persistence and consistency there's no success in this world right now without persistence watu wengi sana wakizungumza wale ufanikiwa wanasema yani jamaa bana alijaribu tu ikatiki eh sasa sikia mtu diamond ah yani diamond ampiga kawimbo kamoya pap ukamtoa bana au sikia mtu yule jamaa mfanye bish ah wewe yani yule jamaa bana alipata bahati alianza tu kabiashara pap kabiashara kakapita no there is no overnight success si mmoja uko na mode mmoja flood my weather unajua flood my weather ajao kupigwa kwenye mapambano yake yote na the last pambano alipo zaidi ya dola milioni 100 kupigana 
in 36 second na 36 second alirusha ngumi chache sana na kuruka ruka tu anjani akuvimba kula kutoka jasho lakini akalipa siku moja wakawa namuuliza na mwambia friend meweza nikana you are the luck guy sio kama kina Tyson si wakawa na kama wanamsema ana bahati akasema guys listen i'm not luck guy akasema unafikiri mimi ni luck guy akalisema show me one boxer in the world ambaye ana exercise like i do ninaamka kila siku saa 9 alfajiri wakati kila bondi amelala na ninakimbia maili 12 kila siku Nikimaliza kwenye gym mazoezi yangu ya kawaida wakati kila bondia ameenda kulala mimi bado pia usiku naenda kufanya mazoezi yangu whatever you see in the public there is an investment in the private hakuna kitu cha overnight let me finish with this example ambao naipenda when it comes to persistence bamboo chinese bamboo this is my favorite example chinese bamboo ni mwanzi wa kichina mwanzi wa kichina ukiupanda kwa mwaka wa kwanza Uta, unatakiwa umwagilie kuanzia Januari mpaka Desemba na hauoti hata kitu kimoja. Hauchipuzi chochote kile. Lakini ukiacha kumwagilia mbegu inakufa. Ili upate lazima every day uwe unamwagilia. Ukifika mwaka wa pili mwezi wa kwanza mwagilia. Siku zote za, za mwezi. Mwezi wa pili mpaka mwezi wa mbili mwaka wa pili hauoti. Yaani shamba likiwa ekamia linakuwa tu yeupe. Mtu akikuuliza unamwagilia nini unasema Kuna mwanzi wangu kwa hapa nasubiri wote. Mtu anakuona umechenga nyikio lakini you know what you are doing because it takes persistence and it takes endurance. Mwaka wa tatu the same. Mwaka wa nne the same. Sasa fikiria mpaka mwaka ne watu wamevuna maindi marangapi. Wamevuna mpunga marangapi. Walio mchiche ndoka msasi kushina moja. Kila badesi kushina moja. Tuende sokoni badesi mapana mi badu wanafana nini? Na mwagilia. Mwaka wa nne nothing. When it gets to the fifth year. Kwanzia mwezi wa kwanza mpaka mwezi wa sita mwanzi wa kichina unakuwa kwa urefu wa futi tisini. Na mwanzi mmoja ukiuza ni sana sana mtu karibu amelima kama ikalimia za mahindi au za, za mpunga. What am I trying to say? Persist. There's no overnight success. I know you'll get there but never get tired. Keep on Beating, keep on trying. Mpaka umeona result. You are here today because you are so much precious. Not only in your sight, but in the sight of the world. Dunia inakusubiri udhirishe uwezo wako. Dunia inasubiri udhirishe nguvu zako. Dunia inasubiri udhirishe vipaji vyako. Sina shaka miaka michache bada leo. Kuna watu mmeka pale, tutakutana mkio fanya beshara wakubwa sana. Tutakutana mkio mmeanzisha makampunia nwenyewe. Tutakutana mkio matajiri makubwa sana. Kuna siku tamiliki television, mtandao wa television katika nchi. Na siku moja, tutakutana tukipiana pongezi kwamba One day, tulikutana suwa tukiwa watu wa kawaida. Lakini leo, tumekua watu marufu. See you at the top. Asante sana. Nakupenda kwa moyo wote Nchi yangu Tanzania Jina lako nitamusana